The first box we will look at today is the constraint box. And this box is a widget that imposes additional constraints on its child. For example, if you wanted child to have a minimum height of 50 logical pixels, you could use const box constraints with min height 50. If we look at the documentation down here, then in the properties we can see that we have these constraints that is getting this object of a box constraints. And box constraints then, if you have a look over here, there's plenty of different properties between others there are max height width and min height min width. For this example, let's say that we have a elevated button. It needs the unpressed callback and also some child which will be a text called button. Something like this. There we go. Let's fix the const. And now we have a very small button on the screen. But let's say we would like it to be slightly larger in height. We can do it by constraining it with a constraint box. Let's do constraint box. Let's give it constraints, which will be box constraints. And now let's give it some minimum height, let's say. And let's set it to 100 logical pixels. Here we go. Now our button stretches up to 100. Because when we use the constraint box, now the constraint box is setting the constraints on its child. So it's sending to its child that it wants its child to size itself up to 100 pixels. And then when the button is sizing itself, first it looks at the constraints that came from the parent, and then it tries to fit these constraints. But the button is implemented in the way that if the constraint says you can use maximum of 100 logical pixels, then the button will use the 100 logical pixels. In opposition to the constraint box, we have this unconstrained box class. And this is a widget that imposes no constraints on its child, allowing it to render if at its natural size. That allows a child to render in the size it would render if it were alone on an infinite canvas, with no constraints. And we can see that this widget, except of getting a child, it can also have some clip behavior, so it can clip if some widget would be to, over, to overflow. And then also we can give it some axes to retain constraints on, if any, and we also can give it a text direction. So let's try. What happens if we change our constraint box to an unconstrained box? And that should probably start with the capital U. Then of course it doesn't get constraints anymore. And we can see that the button is back to its original size. Because the button is implemented in a way that if it gets an unbound um, size, so if the parent is not really giving it any constraints to it, that it should size itself to, then it decides to size itself at the minimum to the child that it's containing. And it's containing the text and it also has some padding on top of that. So let's say that now we will have a sized box around this with width width of a 300 and height of 200 this time, why not? And then let's say that instead of our button, let's remove the button, we will have a container here. And let's say that our container will have a color of colors red this time. And then width of 200. And also let's give it a height of 400. Ta-da! Our sized box over here limits the children to 300 by 200. So 300 by width and 200 by height. Then we have the unconstrained box. What this unconstrained box does now, it lifts up the restrictions from the size box. So the size box set to the constraint box. You can render to the maximum of 300 by 200. The constraint box took these constraints and said to its child, the container, you can render your size unbound. So take as much spa space as you want, both in height and width. And because our container here has a width of 200, which is contained within 300 that size box has, then it's not overflowing in the width. But the height over here is now 400, which is 200 more than the 200 that the size box is limiting it to. So it's overflowing, and the constraint box allows it to overflow. If we use the clip behavior now, to let's say hard edge, then at least the overflow will be not drawn on the screen. 
but we still see the error over here that we are actually overflowing. The next widget is a constraints transform box. It's a container widget that applies an arbitrary transform to its constraints, and then it sizes its child using the resulting box constraints, optionally clipping or treating the overflow as an error. In other words, it will get some constraints and it will just make some transformation of these const constraints and then it will build its children based on these con new constraints. Let's have a look at this example from documentation over here. So in the following snippet, the cart is guaranteed to be at least as tall as neutral height. Unlike the unconstrained box, it will become taller if its natural height is smaller than 40 pixels. And then if the container is not high enough to show the full content of the cart, then in debug mode we will see the error again. Let's try it out. So we have a container over here. The container has some constraints and its maximum height is 40 and its height should be between 40 and 100 right now. Then we have some alignment and we have a child which is a constraint transfer box. And the transformation is that the max height should be unconstrained now. So we currently have just a simple text over here but if we for example have also we have the card so our card have a text and now let's say that this text will be wrapped with a sized box and let's give it a height of 200 or maybe let's change it even to container now so that we can also give it a color Here we go, and we cannot be a constant widget anymore. So, what happened is now that we were constrained with this container over here to a hundred, between 40 and 100 of the height. However, our container down here wants to be 200 in height, which is of course more than 100, so the maximum constraint. Because we set the constraint transform, and we transform the constraints, so these constraints over here, as, or specifically this one, to the max height unconstrained, then the container can overflow, as we can see on the right side of the screen right now. And here we could of course pass any different of these um, constraint transformation, transform boxes that we have. So for example, unmodified. So if we have an unmodified, then we are staying within the bounds that were set here by the box constraints. Alright, the next box that we have is the overflow box, a widget that imposes different constraints on its child than it gets from its parent, possibly allowing the child to overflow the parent. So it works similarly to um, the boxes that we've seen before, which could make the child overflow we can set the parameters like max height, max width, mean height, and mean width. With this constraints transform box, we can just modify, for example, the max height with this function that we've passed to the constraint transform box. But if we use now instead the overflow box, and we will set here the max height to, let's say, 200 or 300, then we just overflow the constraint that was set here. And you can see that right now we don't even get the error of overflowing. We could also say mean height, mean height to let's say now 200, save like that, let's remove the max height, let's see what happens. <laughs> Nothing, we got a conflict. Because currently the max height is 100 and the mean height is 200. So we are between 200 and 100, which is minus 100 of the constraint that we have to use. So of course it cannot work. But we can also override the second one over here to let's say 400. And in that case, it takes 200 over here, the minimum value, because that's what this container is specifying. Let's make it 500, for example. There we go. Now we are taking up the higher constraint, which is 400. And if we just go in between, then the container will have its true size of 300 right now, because it's between 200 and 400. So sized overflow box, so it's a widget that is specific size, so it has some size, but it passes its original constraints through to its child. So it got some constraints from the parent, 
and despite having some size, it's still passing the original parent's constraints. So if parent will be unbounded, it will pass the unbounded constraints to the child. And it can then overflow. So let's have a look at the sized overflow box. And I have modified the example a little bit. So I've removed the cart that we had here in the container. And also here we have now the sized overflow box within the constraints. I think these constraints can go away right now. And the whole container as well to make it slightly simpler to look at. Here we go. So we have the sized overflow box with which is getting a size. So this box is now having a size of 100 by 300, like it would be a sized box. A sized box also would have 100 by 300. The difference between this box and the sized box is that a sized box would force its child to be within these constraints, within this size that it has. Instead, the overflow box will let the child overflow despite of the size. So here we have a container and this container is red and it has this hello world right now. Let's say that we give it a width and that will be a width of, let's say, 400. So our size over here says that the width should be maximum of 100 because that's the size, but our child will want 400. Save that. There we go. We get the width of 400, which is overflowing. And also we do not get an exception here. If we have a look at the log also, no error. Let's restart it. There we go. No error. No overflow error. Now let's try just one more thing before we finish. So let's say that maybe not shrink, but we have some size box over here with a width now of 200. So we have this size overflow box, which has a size, but its child is able to overflow this size. However, if you constrain the size overflow box with something else like a size box of a width 200, then this child is overflowing this size, but it's not overflowing the sized box over here with 200. All right, that was the overview of all the boxes that I could find in the Flutter framework. Anyways, I think it's really good to know all of the boxes and use the Flutter framework to the full. So please subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. But for now, I call you to death and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.